This is a nigun from a few months ago, right when we started Shir. I was going through the, an old Shir this week and I remembered this one. because there's so much I would like to I would like to discuss with everyone and I'm, I'm thank you so much for coming everybody and welcoming everyone and again it warms our, our mama it's just like it's like Shabbos on Monday night here for us really thank you well, besides the guitar and this and this and all the other things but really it's so special for us I like Shabbat I like, I like Shabbat um, well, okay I feel like a lifetime has passed since last week that's the truth a lifetime has really, really has. 
And there's been, just even on this block around here, so many simchas and births. And, and we, were at, we were at the most special bris this morning, my dear friend Yakir. Oh, Esther, well, Mazel Tov. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Can you boost my heart? You should only be able to open your mouth and share good news about your children. Amen. 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 And um, other friends of ours had a baby boy. Anyway, there's, there's, a, there's so much in the air. However, this, um, this kufa, this period of time also has been a really... Uh, let's see if anyone remembers. Did anyone do their homework last week? Ah, you forgot. You weren't listening to the last two minutes. It's okay. You weren't here. It's okay. I was on. You were on your own line. <clears throat> last week we got to homework, which is a clear uh, intro into what we're, Bezrat Hashem, please God, I'm going to be attempting to, to go into tonight. But last week we began learning a piece which we never even got to in the text. That's how strong just the outside of it was. And the text was kind of <laughs> describing two types of evil. And tonight's learning will be not just complimenting whatever we learned last week, but almost saying that last week's Torah, as high as it was, as, means nothing if it's not this week's Torah as well. And everything we're going to be learning tonight is directly connected to the most precious neshama in the world, in whose mer- in whose, in whose lilui neshama, the vision of her soul we're going to be learning for tonight, which is our dear, dear friend, Shira Rachma Bas Ahuva. Shira Rachma Bas Alter Sonata. Alter Sonata. Ahuva. And you're uh, like Ahuva first. Right. One of, our, one of our best friends in the world, one of our best, best friends in the world, who, uh, who already took f- five. five years. Five years. The fifth year, i was this past Shabbos. And instead of me describing to you who she was and how much she's an inspiration for every week that we learn, I've, Hashem had infinite <coughs> compassion. We're actually going to see that through the text tonight. I, c- I could start. I would never end. But to describe who she was, and those of you who were in the room who knew who she was, you know that any word that I say won't come close to even covering the tip of what kind of person we're speaking about. But tonight's text will actually directly hit home in a very, very strong way. And every word, nigun, and, and tear, and simcha, and smile tonight should be for the Elohim Nisham of our precious friend who is, Baruch Hashem, continuing to open gate after gate after gate in Shemaim for all of us. And Bezvat Hashem, the reunion of Tchias Mesim shouldn't be long at all. It should be immediately. Bezvat Hashem. And we continue to learn also for the Elohim Nisham of, of Elie, uh, Eliezer ben Eliel Aryeh, Miriam Bat Eliyahu, Zechariah ben Yaakov, and for the Rufu Shlema of Shoshana Resa Bas Ahuva, and Michal Moshe Zev ben Yehudis, and any other names, please insert to yourself, because I know sometimes this, this actually takes up the whole shir, just names. We shouldn't have any names. Only names to say Mazel Tov, Bezvat Hashem. Um, last week's homework was pretty interesting. Last week's homework was... Are you able to catch yourself being confused as to what the Ribbon Ishtoelam wants in your life and not get ticked off by it? And actually, you're able to catch yourself not knowing exactly what the simon is, what the sign is that you're supposed to be doing in this world, and instead of it irritating you, are you able to look at that and be like, at least this is a sign that I'm alive. Just like we learned. That what's the first sign of life by a baby? is when it comes out and it screams and it cries. There's no difference in this world between the way that a baby shows us the first sign of life and the way that we have to remind ourselves that we're alive. We're alive with a cry that says, what am I doing in this world? That was the last week's teaching. But instead of it driving us nuts and burying us spiritually and weighing so heavy on us, saying, what am I doing in this world? Oy vey! saying, what am I doing in this world? I am so happy that this is the question that I'm actually asking myself. How happy am I with these questions that I'm asking myself? If we only knew how lucky we were to ask ourselves certain intriguing questions, as opposed to all the other shtiyot that we usually ask ourselves, pain would be completely transformed (laughs) into meaning. I have friends that when I bring up sometimes issues, you know, relationship issues, 
Husband and wife issues, which there's a secret I want to tell everyone in this room. Everyone has them. <laughs> everyone has them, right? But don't tell anybody. Right? <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. So sometimes, right? Um, so people are amazed. They say, you mean that it's okay to, like, to ask Hashem, why is it so, wh wh why do I have to go through this? Well, it depends how you're asking. Why do I have to go through this? Or, can you please enlighten me as to why I have to go through this? Everything is the manner in which you ask the question. But you have homework again this week, and you have to figure out how this week, without even learning what we're going to be learning tonight, what about this coming week? What about starting from tonight? When you're caught in the middle of something, unless everyone, I mean, look, it could be that all of you, your beautiful faces in this room right now, that each of you has had utmost clarity this whole week. And therefore, there's no need to ask, what am I really supposed to be doing? What, what's, what's this, what are the signs? Which could be. I wouldn't put it past anyone that walks through our door. Mamash. Smell Bina's cookies. There's <laughs> infinite clarity <laughs> all the time. But I want to share my heart of hearts with you tonight. Mamash, my heart of hearts, because this past weekend... Um, I had a lot of these questions of, Hashem, what are, you, what are you really showing me? I told you last week that every year Shabbos Yitro, Parashat Yitro, is very overwhelming. Why? Every week, we, every, I said it last year and the year before, is when we get to the parasha that talks about Aserah Sadebros, God giving us the Torah, I'm always so nervous that I'm going I'm to miss it again. I'm going to miss what's going on again, and I'm just not going to hear this year. I'm not going to hear whatever I'm supposed to be hearing. I'll never forget it. One year... I went out to Bat Ayn for Shavuot, for Shavuot. And that was the year, it was many years ago, and I remember that, be, that year I began a new minhag. I said, I'm not going to drive myself nuts with trying to understand every single one of the Ten Commandments. When, some, when one of the Dibros, when one of the commandments hits me stronger than ever, I know that this year, this is my, this is my main avoda. And, you know, I was nervous. Like, what happens if, like, Lot Tirzach is the one that starts to shake me up? Like, don't, don't kill anybody. What does that say about myself, right? Baruch Hashem, it wasn't Lot Tirzach, but it was really, I, I remember I heard it screaming in my, in my, in my, in my head, in my heart, Kabed Esavicha V'Simecha, that year, honor your parents. And it was such a strong one. And it's not like, oh, the next year you don't have to work on honoring your parents, because you hear a different, you hear something else. Everything you ever heard in life that strikes you very deep that you're supposed to work on, you, you're always going to work on it. No matter... If that's what you're hearing right now, call Gadol. You hear one loud thing in your life, the realness, the loudness, the otzma, the power of one word from God. That don't worry. Even if you move on in life, you don't leave those things behind. It's always there, and it's always, it'll always be with you. This Shabbos Yitro, I'm freaking out again. We were up north Thursday at a wedding, and we stayed up north, and... and it was Shabbos somewhere without mentioning names, even though some of you know where it was, but it's not important. And all Shabbos long, I mean, leading up to Shabbos, really since last week, I was wondering, not just who is going to be, like, who's going to be the one that's... Shalom Aleichem, guys. Not only who is... Are there any chairs in the back? There are? Okay. The question wasn't only which Dibra am I going to hear, but am I going to be feeling comfortable amongst the people that I'm going to be with when I hear Hashem talking to me? You hear the difference? Because I was going to a hotel that I had no idea who was going to be there. I had no idea who was going to be there. And it started off pretty good. I got into a good zone. I had a... I had this great Sefer, the Emunah Sitecha, Rav Moshe Wolfson, the Sefer I've been hanging with for a while. It put me in a really strong, strong place. Because he actually <clears throat> started talking about the Midrash that the Ishbitzi spoke about in Yitro too. Just seeing it in two different places was so beautiful. Let's take peti ya'arim. Beautiful Midrash over there. But in any event, this is what's so strong. This is what struck me so deep. Shabbos, I want to share this with you. This is really he sitting on my, on, my, on my heart very heavily, and it's what we're here to learn about tonight. <coughs> Friday night begins, and they start looking around, who's going to be chazan? Abu Hashem, I am not chazan this one week. I'm just going to 
I sit in the corner with my safer, it's going to be a gevat. And it was. Suddenly I see someone goes up to Dav, and I look at him, I'm like, wow, I know this guy. He lives somewhere, I learn with him sometimes in Eretz Yisrael. Beautiful neshama, big neshama. And I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, this is going to be good. He starts, Lechu nirana, right? You can't get away from Rib Shlomo, whether you like it or not. He's everywhere, hunting you everywhere. He starts, Lechu nirana. I'm like, okay, it's great. Even though by that point, I, I could have honestly, I'm embarrassed saying this here, Dafka, but I could have been okay with Lechu nirana, Hashem, I could have been. It wasn't about what Nusach it was. It was just like, I'm with my family away, my girls, and they're waiting for me outside. It's this gevat. And the chazan, and maybe he even is going to hear this, he might even... <laughs> <laughs> scroll, scroll, scroll. I can't, I don't, yeah. I don't know if he's online. I don't think so, but he might mean this, but it's okay, I'll say this, because I, I told this to him too. I thought I went to every type of Shlomo Davening there is. He, discussed, he, he broke the charts. He sang more Nigunim than I've ever heard anyone sing on a Friday night. It really was a lot. I mean, he sang, um, he sang anything you could imagine, was for sure he sang, and anything you can't imagine he sang too. Okay? And I'm thinking, wow, okay, this is, this is, this is cool. This is, this is great. But he's, he's so zis, and he was holding his baby. You could, he has all these children running around, he's holding a baby. Now the room is filled with chassidim, <coughs> chassidim, svardim, litvishes. It's like the whole salad, okay? And he sang very long. It was, long, it was a very long davening. So after shul, going up to me, oh, shalom aleichem, how are you? He said to me, oh, look, you know, I wasn't going to dive in too long, but I saw you. I was like, how could I not sing? That's what he told me. I'm thinking. <laughs> and then as I'm talking to him, this person comes up to him. Now, the last thing I learned right before we finished diving in, because there was plenty of time to look at Svar, <laughs> was, was the Indian of Vayichan Sham Yisrael Ke'ish Echad Belev Echad. That when we camped at, at our Sinai, we were, we were all of us like one. And the truth is that it, it, it kind of connects all to the, also to the Pasuk, Vayichad Yitro al Kola Tova. Yitro also was tuned into this oneness. This guy comes up to the Chaz and he says, Tagili, ata ita Chazan? He says, Ken. He's like, Ata shamata pama la musak tircha de tzibura? Did you ever hear of the concept? Tircha de tzibura, which means, I want to explain to those who don't understand, which means a tircha, meaning a, uh, at least a tircha. An imposition. An imposition, overwhelming imposition on the crowd. So he says, and look at this tzaddik, I could cry thinking about this, this guy's face. He says to him, Im If I hurt you, I'm really sorry. And he says, Ata ken bi. He says, you did hurt me. You did hurt me. And I'm thinking, this is going to go really bad now. I turn on Kohen vibe. I'm about to freak out on this guy. <laughs> Okay, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to lose it on him. Saying to him, listen, um, you know, I, no, no, I'm saying, listen, if you want to, I, I was about to say something, but I'm not even going to say it right now. I was about to lose it on this guy. But I said, you know, if this guy is not losing it, he's here to teach me a lesson right now. I'm not going to lose it. He says, Ata ken pagata bi. He says, Ani mamash, eva kislicha. I'm so sorry if I hurt your feelings. He says, to do this, sing, all this singing, we're on vacation here, he says. <laughs> and then he says, and do you know it's even us or according to the halacha to hold your child while you're davening? Oh. And he says, and the guy's still eating everything. He says, I'm so sorry, I didn't know. And, and the guy saw that he kind of like held my hand back as he saw that I was, I said to him, all I said was, wow, toda. I really enjoyed the davening. And then I started calling, I started cornering people in the room. I said, Did you like the davening? Did you like the davening? And lo and behold, we go up to the dining room, and two, I didn't tell my wife who it was till the next day, but two tables next to us, there's this guy that's sitting there with his wife and grandson. Didn't say a word to Mal Shabbos. When I realized really he was hawking every waiter, anyone that was there in the room, and, and I was saying to myself, how on earth am I supposed to hear anything Hashem says 
when I don't feel that I'm davening to the same God as this person. Pashat. Not that my God is higher or I'm higher, but there is no way in the world that I am davening to the same place as someone that could say such words. just doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. And then what happened Shabbos Mincha is that there was a waiter there that you could tell he was a waiter even when he came to shul because they have this kind of tilbosheh, they have this, um, this um, attire. And he, da- and he was davening with so much kavana, so much kavana. And then when he went to go waiter tables, he was just so pleasant and so nice. And I said, Rebona Shleilam, now this person is just doing his thing in the world and he's happy to be able to serve Yidin and to serve you. And it was like, wow, what a mikvah. It felt so nice. It felt so close to him. But then when he got up to get an aliyah at Mincha and he just he only wore a shirt, they started giving him trouble. Oh, that's a chalasim, uh, you have to put a jacket on. He just looked at them and he said, Baruch is Hashem, Hamvarach, you know. He just went and said in Aliyah, he's like, this is, I'm not even, I'm not even going to let that get to me. And he taught me. He taught me. That guy taught me the whole deal. If we're going to look for reasons why we feel it'll be impossible for Jews to be together, we're going to be very, 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 very successful. We're going to be very, we're going to be tremendously successful in that. No one has any doubt about that. What we need to strive for is to be surrounded and connected to neshamas that are what we call me'al olam hamachloket. I want to explain this concept. There are certain types of souls in the world that their, their, I don't know if it's purity or their innate energy which they show in the world and what they, sh- what they bring out into the world is reaching a place where machloket, which means um, dispute, conflict, doesn't reach. It's almost like whatever they do, you could disagree or not agree with them, but they're me'alze, they're above it. Like if you have something, it doesn't... It doesn't have to do with them. These big, big neshamas in the world are able to tolerate a lot more than the normal person is. Because there is this line, <coughs> this kav. What's the kav? The kav is, does machloket affect me or not? Does someone's opinion about me affect me or not? Every conversation I've been having the last few weeks with people always boils down to this nikuda, to this point of... Do I love the world enough to not care what someone thinks about me or not? Do I, am I in love with what I'm supposed to do in the world? Am I in love with it enough to mamish, not an angry place, a peaceful place, to not care what someone thinks about me and about what I'm doing or not? The only way you could reach that place of truly not caring what someone thinks about you is only if you love that person till the end of the world. It only comes from a place of an abundance of love. If you don't love the person so much and you let them, their opinion about you, fizzle you up, it means you don't really love that person. That waiter turned around to people that are trying to get him to put on a jacket and I, I bombish, it took 10 seconds, but I saw when he turned around to them, I saw what he was saying was, didn't you guys hear the Ten Commandments this morning? <laughs> Are you, do you really think you need to tell me to put on a jacket to get an aliyah? Even if it was 100% wrong what I did, that he didn't put on a jacket for an aliyah? Those neshamas that are untouched, they are untouched by people's katnut hadat, which means by small mindedness, those neshamas that are untouched by people's opinions about them are huge, huge, huge neshamas. In fact, those are the types of neshamas for which Hashem created the world. How do we know this? So it's driving me nuts. I was looking for this safer. I can't find it. I think I thought it was this one. This the 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 pshesches. Simchas Yisrael, I can't find it inside. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to find it a minute after everyone leaves. And the Pshitzka says, like last Shabbos, it says, Ve'item li zgula mikol ha'amim. You will be for the Am Yisrael. You will be for me a zgula from all other nations. What's a zgula? I'm asking you, what's a zgula? 
how do we, how do we refer today to zgula? What's a zgula? A good luck. What is it based on? Nothing. An amulet. Going, you, know, you could say a zgula. You could say a million things. It's not based on anything. It's a zgula for this. Meaning, I could explain to you all the deepest, deepest reasons why something is a zgula in order to do this, why something is a zgula in order to do that. A zgula in its mahut is meant to be based on nothing but this is the way Hashem wanted it. What drives us Yidin nuts? That pasuk. V'hitem li zgula mikol amin. We, Am Yisrael, are destined to be a zgula from all the nations of the world. Why? Kacha. Let's be Israeli tonight. <laughs> Lama? Kacha. V'hitem li zgula. The, the Pshischa says, we could break our heads against the wall for another 5,000 years. But the Nikudat Motza, the place where I begin my journey, is that God decided that we are going to be a zgula from all, all, from all other nations. Last Shabbos, while this all, whole thing was taking place, it broke my heart. Because Shabbos morning, I had to dive in, in the same room with, with, this, with, with this person. And I was like, I don't know, what, how, what am I supposed to do right now? What am I supposed to do? Well, how am I going to really feel that we're together right now? It's killing me. And from all Shabbos of the world to say, I'm just going to dive in alone in a forest and it'll be higher, mm -hmm. you can't miss the Kriya Satora of Asayas Adivas. You can't. And where we were, and we, it was a big taiva, it was a big uh, uh, desire to go out to the fields, because where we were, it was just all putting mamish, everything overlooking the Kinar. It was, it was a big desire to go out and do your own thing. And you went back to Shul. And this is what we're talking about tonight. And this is directly connected to Shira. And to Reb Shlomo. What do we mourn when we mourn over somebody? What are we mourning? What is the Avelut? So, there is an amazing woman who I mentioned her name before in Shira. Her name is Ruth Yair Nussbaum. You know, Isisha? You know Ruth? I think you know her. She was from the Yakar Chavra. Ruth, those of you who know, Ariel, you, of course you know, she said something incredible in a, in a ma'amar, in an article she published a few years ago about what it is that she's mourning over the loss of Rib Shlomo. She said that the saddest thing for her is that we'll be learning the same sfarim that he learned from, but without him in the world, the letters, that, the words that the Rebbe's wrote, they don't jump up and start dancing in front of our face anymore. The perish, the understanding what the tzaddikim said, you're mourning the understanding of Hashem's beauty and Hashem's dance in this world. That's what's lacking in the world. Yeah, the person that... You, 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 you miss those things. You don't really mourn over those things. Yidin don't mourn over missing someone physically. Yidin mourn over missing someone's interpretation of what Hashem had in mind when He created the world. Hmm. It's a very big, big difference between missing and mourning. Ruth wrote that really, that's, that's what it hurt her so much, is that she'll she open the Ishbritzer, she'll open the Rabbi Nachman, she'll open the Gdusha Slevi, she'll open the Ramali Melech, but, but that voice that brought those words to be dancing in front of our eyes will stop dancing in front of our eyes. <clears throat> I really connect to what she said because, uh, Zushi, you know, we, we, we've spoken about this so many times, like we could learn it on our own, the text inside, and then you see what he does. Mm -hmm. And you realize that's, that was the hitchabrut, the connection was how the Torah, which has been printed for 200 years, was waiting for a certain neshama to come, and Mamish lifted up in front of our eyes to make it really a beautiful dance. Something so beautiful dancing in front of our eyes. 
And what was, why did it hit me so strong? There's a beautiful pasuk that we've said for many years. After Matan Torah, Kaddish Baruch Hu starts to explain to us, why did I even do this in the first place? And God says, I will lift you up to eagle's wings. I'm going to bring you to me. And you will be for me. A kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And the truth is, without any interpretation, that Pasuk is pretty strong. I will lift you up to an eagle's wings, and I will bring you to me where I am. <coughs> Reb Shlomo said, in the name of Ishbitzer, do you know where God is? Okay, Hashem is here, Hashem is, it's true. <clears throat> but are we supposed to be everywhere? Let's remember, huh? We are everywhere. <laughs> Let's remember what the Rebona Shalom meant when he said, said, what does that mean? I took you on eagle's wings. Now the only way to understand, the only way to understand what does it mean that God says, I'll bring you to me, is asking ourselves very, very important questions. And before we go inside, I, 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 I'm, I'm again like not going to... I could go on without the text, but I need everyone to see it inside. Tonight we have to look at it inside. But what I want to say is like this. I want you to keep in mind right now, while we're learning, to have in mind certain people that you could say, these neshamas are so high while they were alive, or even if they're alive right now, that they are in a place that's called me'al ha'machaloket, above the place of dispute. You know, whether you agree with him or not, I fiercely, the katan in me, who am I to even say this compared to him? But as much as I loved him, I could not really connect to Rav Fruman, Zatzal. And he's a perfect example. Rabbi Menachem Fruman, from Tzkoa. Those of you who know him, talking about know him. Big, one of the biggest neshamas in this door. How much machloket was on him, we don't even know. Me'al, me'al But machloket didn't touch him because he loved the world enough. Let's just keep that in mind, certain neshamas that are so high that they are me'al ha-machloket, above the place of dispute. But just to explain in a second, Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, did they oppose each other? Fiercely. The two schools of thought through which the whole Gemara is kind of divided by, right? The children ended up marrying each other because in the Shoresh, Chazal tell us, there was no machloket. One school of thought felt thought, this is what Hashem meant when He said so and so. Another school of thought said, no, this is what Hashem meant when He said so and so. But what on earth does that have to do with how much I love you? Why are we so nervous about someone else's interpretation of Hashem's love in the world? What makes us so paranoid and so nervous about it? There are reasons for that. I'm just putting these questions out there right now. So it's two pages, front and back. Besides this one, this is back and forth. This is two pages. Every other one here should be back and forth. Two sides. to just preface by saying, because Daniel will, will send out the link, which says Mishpatim, because it's the Shabbos, but we, I couldn't even begin to explain to you how much and how much agony I was last week deciding what we were going to learn, because it's the Pasha of Sayyidina Debras, couldn't know where to begin. This piece is actually 
The pasuk is from the, it's from last Shabbos, but it's not a it's not it, I, I was not willing to, to just go on because that's what you have to do according to the calendar. Hope that's okay with everyone. If Shema is okay with it, I'm okay with it. All right. And the learning also to, should be for the simcha of the life of a new Jewish baby boy, Akiva Arye Hyman, who had a bris this morning. Okay. You know Yakir? Zusha, you know Yakir? He's still, it's Yakir's Abba. Yeah, the bris this morning is beautiful. Okay. The Shlomo says like this. By the way, there's also homework that afterwards, tonight, you have to go into the Ishbitzer and see what he did with this piece. Basically, it's like the same. That's obvious. It's not even homework I have to give out. That should be obvious, right? Imagine we would honestly stop for one moment and ask ourselves, what do I really know about God? I know He created the world, and I know He's around, so therefore, what do I know? Nothing. What do I know about the holiness of Israel? So I know we went through Egypt. I know we were on Mount Sinai. Six million were killed. What, what do I really know? Friends, there are certain questions you are not permitted to not ask yourself. Okay, you're, there's certain shadows in life that... There's certain shadows in life like... What airline do I really prefer? That you could, you could get away with not asking yourself that question and making it in this world. You cannot ask yourself, there's certain things that you push it, if you don't ask yourselves, you're not really alive. Okay? What do I know about my own soul? What do I know about my own holiness? What do I know about the world? What does God want of me? Why did he bring me here in the first place? <coughs> you know, stuff we usually... <laughs> no? Tuesday morning talk, huh? Yeah, yeah you, you know. <laughs> the, the, norm, the basics, and then you grow right? Up. This stuff, Rib Shlomo says, <coughs> you can't not ask yourself. You could kid yourself and think you could, you could make it through the world if you don't ask yourself these questions, but you're only fooling yourself. The Torah says, when I took you out of Egypt, I carried you on wings of an eagle. And therefore, God says, you have to listen to me and keep my covenant and be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy people. Every word, every letter in the Torah is infinite. So why ain't Dafka an eagle, a Neshe? What's so significant about the way an eagle flies? Look what he says here. Do you know what God really did to us when he gave us the tire? He lifted us up so high, but not the kind of high we're used to. It's like, you know, for instance, even spiritually high. Brother, how was Shabbos? So high. We're not even, which is, we're not knocking that, but we're not even talking about that you're able to describe that it was high. He'll get to it in a second. I'm sorry, I'm jumping. I'm just so excited. The place that Hashem... Look outside the text for a second. The place that Hashem is talking about, that I lifted you up, that's the place that you only know that you're there if you're absolutely unable to describe it on any level. If you can begin describing what that feels like, it means you're not there. There's another concept, I, I never forget this, so I was taking a walk in Bana'ayin a few months ago. Remember I told you I was at that silent retreat? I saw some of you, the silent, whatever, we had, a, we had a silent walk, so I was silently walking, and I heard people talking, which was like, when you, like after Yom Kippur, you know, someone gives you a bagel, that's what it felt like, to hear someone talking, because you, you don't hear talking for hours. I started walking, and here, I heard a conversation. It was a rabbi giving a shir to a bunch of students in the... I'm in the field there in Bat'ayin. He said, he said, I want to tell you guys, how do you know you reached the place of mamish bitul, of self-annihilation, of yourself? 
He says, if you feel like you're mevutal, that means you're not mevutal. Meaning, if you feel that you've really emptied out your vessel, that means that itself is proof that your vessel isn't emptied out. Because it's not, you can't feel these things. You can't describe it. But if you say this, it's like a person saying, how do I know that you really reached the place of humility? You, you never know these things. It's not things you know in this world. So when Rabbi Shlomo is going to talk about reaching a high place, it's not the kind of high like Shabbos was so high. I'm jumping again, my brain, I've, I don't have ADHD, but in here I do sometimes because jumping off of your energies. Listen to this. You remember who Rabbi Shlomo said was the highest son out of the four sons of the Leila Seder at the Seder table? Who was the highest, he said? We think that the Shenoi Deli Show is like, I don't even know how to ask questions. The Shlomo says, do you know what the Shenoi Deli Show, why he can't ask any question? Because he, he was there from the beginning of the Seder, and he started hearing about how God took us out of Egypt, and he started feeling it, what on earth is he going to be asking right exactly? Reb Shlomo says, take the four sons to the Kotel. What does the Chacham say when he looks at it? Oh, Herod built that over here at that year. What does the Rasha say? <laughs> Stupid Jews. You think this means anything? The Tam is like, hmm, I never knew it could be so holy here. The Shenoi Deli Shul is looking at the place where the base of Migdash stood and is like, which is the exact opposite order of the way that we usually look at the four, at the four sons. This is the type of highness that Rib Shlomo will be talking about. If you can talk about it, it already isn't it. <clears throat> Third paragraph, second line. Do you know what God really did to us when He gave us the Torah? He lifted us up so high, but not the kind of high we are used to. The world always talks about how everyone wants to be high. What do they know about high? They judge their highness in comparison to the world's lowness. But to be high on eagle's wings is not in comparison to anyone or anything. Kan sharim doesn't mean in a comparison to the rest of the world, it's high. Kan sharim is that place that has no hashva'a, that has no comparison. He's going to explain what that means in a minute. Take the highness of all the people who ever took drugs in this world. And by the way, you know, he didn't, it's a very interesting thing. When he was with, there's a lot of, in these interviews where, when he talks about the highness of people taking drugs, he never knocks it. What he does, though, is that he compares it to Kedusha. Okay, so let's look what he says right now. Take the highness of all the people who ever took drugs in the world and take the Kotzka Rebbe on a Friday night. <laughs> Mentioning these two things in the same sentence is a joke. What's, what's to compare? So what is the highness of eagles all about? Can't finish, huh? Open your hearts like mad. First of all, all birds are higher than where my head is. Birds always fly, and it's above where my head is. What does that mean? They reach a place that is higher physically than what this, 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 this chaver of ours, the, 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 we call him the chatterbox, what the brain, what the judge, where the judge resides. Birds bichlal are higher. But the thing is that an eagle can fly the highest, more than any other bird. That means that we are talking about the kind of highness which is absolutely beyond my concept of being high. Okay? I can't, again, I can say a lot of things feel very high, a lot of moments are high, people are high. Then there's this, like, this whole other level of neshamas in the world. They are... We can't, ex we can't explain any of it. They are so beyond us, we can't believe they have anything to do with us, they're way be they're they're much higher than it. You see what it is, and this gets a little bit tricky. This paragraph, but that's the only hard part of tonight, besides homework. 
any highness which I can still fathom with my head is not what we're talking about here. When it comes to all forms of highness in the world, even if I have a concept that I don't have a concept in it, is also not an, not an eagle's highness. If it's this kind of highness, which is beyond comparison, this is the eagle. This is what God took us out of Egypt for. Now I want to explain something. This is very important to understand. And it's very hard as an Am, as Bnei Yisrael, we've had a very hard time really internalizing this. We were not created as a nation to be an existing nation that's very powerful and that does good things in the world. You know, let's be real. There are many beautiful nations in the world. Let's be done with this whole anti-anti business. There are pl plenty of Shmendriks too. I'm not saying there aren't, but there are other nations that do some really strong things in the world, some beautiful things in the world. It's so beyond us that by us, Am Yisrael, being ourselves means not just good people, not just sweet people, not just people that spread a nice peaceful message in the world. Being Am Yisrael, being ourselves, means the highest eagles. It means the ultimate. And it's so hard, it's so difficult to A, understand what that means, but B, just realize that that's, this is where it's at. If God didn't want us to mama shine, soar, and literally change the world, do you know what God would have said to us when he took us out of Egypt? I took you out of Egypt because it was really hard for me to see you guys as slaves. By us, getting out of jail doesn't just mean, I'm out of jail. By us, getting out of jail means now it's time to become the king. Who do we learn this from? Yosef HaTzadik. Reb Shlomo says, Mekimi me Afardal, God, you take me out of Afardal of um, um, uh, low dust. Me Ashpot Yarim Evion, you'll, you'll lift up an Evion, a poor person from Ashpot, from the garbage. But why? The Hoshivi im Nedivim, im Nedive Amo. To sit me up there with the highest people in the world. When I go through a crisis, the world's concept of being healthy is that what? I'm not suffering. Because in comparison to where I was, I'm doing much better right now. Forget about comparison right now. The Jewish concept of being healthy in Jewish means I am flying. I'm soaring. I'm in the highest place. I'm a I'm, I'm It's much higher than mundane. It's much higher than normal. It's even higher than being excellent. It means reaching the place of being such a big neshama, where machloket doesn't touch. Which we think, oh, that's just for yechide zgula. That's just for like, you know, certain individual neshamas. Napitam. Napitam. It's all of us as an am. You think Hashem put us through everything we went through, so that we could have a really cute little, like Rabbi Shlomo called it, a, a state, a state, Right? A state that he'd call it like a cute state and we have really beautiful airlines and 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 JNF plants trees on two beach. Do you really think do you do you really think for one second that that really is connecting to the reason that Hashem has put us through all of this? Lehoshivi im nedivim im nedive amo. Don't understand what that means to fly so high, but understand what destiny of Yidin is. Destiny in amongst Am Yisrael, sorry, vitem li zgulami kol amim. You're destined to become the highest creatures that ever existed in the world. Why? Because God decided that. HaKadosh Baruch Hu decided that. That wasn't our decision. It would have been so much easier if we didn't have this zgula love-hate relationship with God. It would have been much easier for all of us if we didn't have this thing in our kishkas that always told us, I have to change the world. I have to be so special. I have to be so great. It'd be so much easier for all of us. But we can't ignore it, Rabbi Shlomo says. There's nothing we could do. You can't ignore it. And this connects to the fact that there are certain questions that you cannot afford to not ask yourself. 
like the questions we learned above. Is it okay if I open the window a little bit? Sure. Mm. It's okay? Okay, sorry. One second. Let me know if it gets too cold. Back in the text. Then it says, Va'avi eschem elai, and I brought you unto me. Do you know what that means? The Ribbon Shel Elam Mamish made us to be a gate through which the service of God should go into the world. I want to read that line again. Look at it inside as I say it. The Ribbon Shel Elam Mamish made us to be a gate, a shar, through which the service of God should go into the world. We are the gates. King David says, Arumimcha Hashem ki dilisani. The regular translation is that God, I'll make you big because you dli, you drew me up, you draw me up. But let's go deeper. The deeper translation is God, I will make you high because diditani, you made me into a devit. You made me into a door. Do you know what the greatest thing in the world is? If I could be a door that people can walk through me to get higher in the world. Let's put it this way. And this is this is this is so amazing. This is the this next paragraph is this is connecting to the, the beautiful neshama that we're learning in memory of tonight. This whole Torah was, but specifically this paragraph. Let's put it this way. The truth is, if we would be the way we should be, it would mean that every Yidullah has the power that when they walk down the street, whenever anyone sees them, they should have a yearning for God in the most unbelievable way. You know, we look at those kind of neshamas like, wow. Yeah, there are certain neshamas in the world that when they walk down the street, they definitely have such magnetism to... They're able, just the way they are, they really... People look at them and say, Wow, I, 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 want, I want to be like them. But when the Ribbon Shalem took us out of Egypt and he told us, I'll bring you to me, the Shalom says, That means that God saw that image for every single Jewish person in the world. What image? That a person walks down the street carrying Hashem's name across their face. Every single person, every single Jew, not just a few of them, every single Jew. And you look at them and they say, wow, I just want to be so close to God. Not I want to be like them. That's paganism. It's not about them. Their light emanates the Indian of, wow, I want to be connected to the source with which, with which they are connecting to. And here I just want to pause for a second. And I wish I had a picture on me. I don't have it on me. Our friend who we're learning in memory of tonight, those of you who know him, this is exactly, for me, this is just me personally, although I think that anyone that knew her will agree with me. Beer shoot her parents, I'm saying this, if it's okay. This is the Nikuda. This is the Nakuda that I wanted to really bring out in life. There are certain Nishamas that we're privileged to know in this world. We can't believe that we have anything to do with them. Why? Because we're so astonished, we're so blown out by the fact that they can walk the streets of the world and carry within them this concept of what? They made themselves a door for everybody else. Ki divitani. You made me into a shar. You made me into a gate. But if you ask any of those neshamas, and these neshamas are the neshamas which are above the makhlokit, you ask them, aren't you blown away by who you are? That would sound like the dumbest question to ask people like this. Because to them, this is normal. These are the neshamas that somehow they are so connected to their own soul and our own souls heard the Seyus Adibros, whether we like it or not. We were all there. Our neshamas all heard the Ten Commandments. 
certain neshamas that ask themselves the questions which we opened up with tonight, those neshamas that aren't scared to ask those questions, what am I doing here in this world? Why did God bring me here in the first place? Like we learned last week, you're not going to get an answer immediately. You might run from one of our desire to the next, like we learned last week. But you know what? Peti harim. Eventually you'll get there. Eventually, after all the searching, after running from this Rebbe to this Rebbe, eventually you'll get there. Then there are the Nishamas. Their existence in this world causes you to long for a Kaddish Baruch Hu in the most sincere way. These neshamas were put on display by a Kaddish Baruch Hu himself to remind us, this is the reason that I have an Essek with you guys in the first place. This is the reason that you and I are even involved in a relationship. Because this, what I'm showing you through this person's dvekas, through this person's place of ultimate peace, from this person's energy of being above Machloket, this is what I had in mind when I created people B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. What does that mean to be in the image of God? I hate to break it to us, it doesn't mean to be as human as we can. It means to be as godly as we can. As human beings. Rib once said, you know, there's a really weird trend in, in the world today. It's called, reach your potential. <coughs> reach your potential? You think we're here to reach our potential? That's so shallow. We're here to reach beyond our potentials. Reaching your potential. Well, I could not have any bad thoughts today. That's a potential, right? You think that's what God wants you, to not have any bad thoughts today? God wants you to soar on eagle's wings. God wants each and every one of us to realize why he has an essek with us. Ishbitz says, Moshe Rabbeinu asked God the burning bush, why? Why? What do you want from us? Why are you telling me to take Am Yisrael out of there? Remember that Ishbitz says, based on the famous Ishbitz, the two questions Moshe Rabbeinu asks God. Moshe asks God, what are you doing? Why should I go and tell people that they're going to be free? And because why? Because this Mitzvah says, because God tells Moshe Rabbeinu, with you guys, I have an everlasting business. What's that everlasting business? I'm going to keep on showing you what I have in mind for you, what I have envisioned for you. I'll keep on sending you certain neshamas who got it, who were a walking, walking, in this world at least, eagle, soaring higher than anything, and you'll never be able to stop the dialogue with me. Because you'll always try to understand, do you really have that in store for me, Rebbe Nishlema? Me, it's just good if I don't get divorced this year, right? For some people. At least, as long as I don't get the, I stay married one more year. That's, for, that's, that's potential. But we're here for beyond potential. We're here to, to, to soar. And any highness that you compare it to means you don't know what we're talking about. Not you, the world. In comparison to the world's concept of high or low, like the, he said, take the Kotz Grebe on Friday night and then take all the high moments that people have ever had at a festival. Not that I'm knocking festivals, chas v'shalom. Not knocking where people get to in spiritual highs during shows. Not at all. But don't ever bring that to the Shabbos table and say, that was pretty high and this is pretty high. To completely, Amavdil ben Kodesh lechol. Chol can be very high. Kodesh is Kodesh. Imagine I advertise Coca Cola. So when I walk on the street and I'm advertising Coca Cola all over myself, a person who sees me can't help it. He has to think of Coca Cola. But he may not like it. Right? He may have to think about it, but he may not like it. But if I'm good in advertising, the person thinks to himself, I should get myself a bottle of Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> the way we are and the way we should be, God tells us what He wants us to be. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for the quick fix, everyone in this room, and learning with us? He just said, God tells us exactly what He wants us to be. God wants to va'avi eschem elai. That through us, when Yedle walks on the street, every person in the world should have such a yearning for God, such a yearning for this highness. 
If I see someone on the street who is really high with God, so I think to myself, wow, I wish I could be like that. You know, Amamish, when I saw that guy at Mincha, that waiter, getting an aliyah, no Rebbe with any vort in the world could have turned me on more than that guy getting the aliyah. Loving people enough to not care so that he could say, Baruch Hashem I'm telling you. The Gemara says that when Avram Avinu was walking down the street, people were running after him because everybody wanted to be like him. So I, I, I want to end off by saying here, you could finish this later, but I want to end off by saying here that it is very, very important and special. It's very, very special to learn Torahs which begin off by saying that you, there are certain questions that you can't afford not to ask yourself. You know, we're always worried about making the wrong decision. There's no wrong decision when you decide to ask yourself strong questions. There's, this, there's wrong decisions afterwards. What do I do with the answers that I'm receiving? But to ask yourself these questions from a real place of just wanting to understand why do you even have an essay with me, God, it will eventually lead you back to your own neshama in the deepest way which heard God's voice. That voice is the only voice human beings ever heard from God, besides Moshe and Aaron, right? As a people, that's all we ever heard from God. God never shlep, Rabbi Shlomo says, God doesn't schlep us back to non sign like a Polish mama saying, I told you, do this, do this. One time, and that was it, in all of humanity. And we're still trying to figure out what that means. But there are certain neshamas that come into our life. And somehow the way they lived their life, they knew what it meant. See, like we said before in the name of our friend Ruth, what are we mourning when someone leaves the world? You, can, you really only mourn over the now, the chisaron, the lacking of understanding why God put us here in the world, which came out of that person. That's what she was crying over Reb Shlomo's loss. And in essence... And me, I, I say this every year in the yard site, because I, I never forget what you said, that was the Shiva of the Shloshim, that Shira left a really, really tremendous and hard legacy to live up to. Because <laughs> because it's really hard to believe that this is the way Hashem wants us to be in the world. It's very hard to really know the answers to all the questions above. But when you're blessed to come in contact with a neshama like that in this world, it'd be enough for us to, to, dance, to dance for 20 years just knowing we were privileged to see such a neshama. But on a yard site, it's very important to remember, we don't need to say anything for the Neshama. the Neshama is sitting with Gan Eden, with the Slonimer, the Rabbi Nachman, the Rabbi Shlomo, all the Tzadikim. It's you and I that are still here in this world. What are we doing with it? Are we doing, are we saying, wow, it was so beautiful to have a certain Neshama on exhibition. What a privilege to see it. Or are we saying, I better figure out my own interpretation of what God had in mind when He created people in this world. And that is the hardest and biggest legacy to live up to. Your own legacy. Your own Rashi ala Torah. Your own Nigun. Your own beauty. If you're going to try to walk the streets of the world like someone else, you might succeed. And it might have nothing to do with you. Nothing. It is so hard to be individual. And yet, it's the greatest freedom in the world it's the highest freedom in the world. A nesher, a level of soaring, this highness which we speak about, 
is only if it's your own thing, which no one ever did before and no one ever will. It's your own dance with the Ribbon Shleilam. It's your own thing. And you can only begin to learn the dance if you love the world enough to not care about what they think of you. Once that's part of your calculations, it might be a bird, but your wings are definitely limited. You're not going to soar. But Esayat Chem al Kanfei Nisharim. The Rebbe Shalom says, first I'm going to put you up there on Kanfei Nisharim. I'm going to take you out for that reason, so that you guys will soar and be walking safer tires in this world, like certain Nishamas that we know. Why? Because Vavi Otchem Elai. Because I know that us, Am Yisrael, God knows, God, God says all the time, I know that you're not going to be able to sleep in your life once you start asking yourself the real questions. But suddenly, that lack of sleeping doesn't feel like a huge headache when you wake up. You actually get more koach afterwards. Rabbi Nachman says in Torah Tet, Nikute Maran, chayai. What is my life all about? When we're able to daven to God. That's what, da, that's what life is all about. And the Tzadikim explain what did Rabbi Nachman mean by that? If you don't have koach in this world, if you're tired, but what do you do? You take all the koach and you put it into davening. If you're still tired after that, it means you still had yourself involved in it. You were, it was still self-absorbing. It was still your own shtick. But if you put all your koach into tefillah, there is no way in the world that you walk out more tired. You walk out with much more strength. Kodesh Baruch Hu should give us, continue to, to, to shower upon us infinite compassion, to be very, very, very lucky, to feel very lucky, to, to witness being close to certain neshamas in the world like we spoke about tonight. And may we really not let them, not them, but we shouldn't let the Rebona Shalom down. We should understand, Bezrat Hashem, that we, were witness, we are privileged to witness certain neshamas come into the world for one reason. To show us, you can also. It might be a big, 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 big legacy. It might be the greatest thing in the world. God didn't take us out of Egypt to be free people. God didn't take us out of Egypt to fly and get high on certain things. Also that. God took us out of Egypt for one reason. Imagine the highest neshama you ever met. That's you. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Talking about being a door through which people walk. You mentioned the Pasik that Hashem wants us to be Mamleches Kohani. What is the Tiva Chom has a beautiful shot on that? What is Mamleches Kohani? You should all be like me. I'm a coin. What is the what is the job mm -hmm. of a coin? You're on the right track. What is the job of a coin? The job of a coin is to bring in, to come closer to Hashem, to help serve Hashem. What Hashem is telling us in that Pasuk, Mamlechas Kohanim, is that we, not just the Kohanim, but all B'nai Yisrael, have to be Kohanim Lebriot, have to be Kohanim to the rest of the world, to show the rest of the world there's an Rabbani Shalom here amongst us. Whether you're Jewish, whether you're not Jewish, whether you're, quote, from, whether you're not, quote, from, whatever, whatever you are, there's Rabboni Shalom amongst us. And that's that's the job we have to do. And that's that's what, you know, when you talk about Shira, Racha, that's what she was. Her you know, what she did was to show for ages what a moon is about, what we talking is about. And uh, that's uh, that, that's the the memory we have from her, it's it's a living memory. That's the the goal we have to live up to.
the, all, everyone that slipped out from fire from close. Um, please, 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 just so that we could uh, continue having the schut to learn here. Please, when you leave, when you when you go back home, as quiet as possible on the stairs. Really appreciate it. We're going to be davening Mariv right now. Women are more than welcome to join us right next to the couch. And let's have a week of uh, actually living all these Torahs. Okay. Okay.